the option alpha and tonight what we're going to talk about is beta this is another one of those Greeks and um, it really kind of uh, blows me off my seat here that not a lot of people uh, who trade stocks and even options know about beta so I want to spend a lot of time tonight uh, in this video going over beta and how you can look for beta how you can analyze beta and how you can use beta obviously you can read the post and see uh, kind of what beta is but we'll go over just a quick little recap here before we get into some really cool charts on my thinkorswim platform and I'll show you guys how to use and find uh, beta correlations on the charts but again, if you remember that beta is a measure of uh, risk in the market. So beta of one would be a um, stock that has pretty much almost equal market risk as the S&P 500. So we generally use the S&P 500 as our benchmark, and that is the systematic risk. That's just the general market risk that we all have to uh, have in our portfolio. No one can really get away from that risk. That's risk of terrorist threats, uh, you know, just one-off type of events that we can never foresee. Now, betas with uh, a higher value than one, so like a beta of two, for example, would have double the risk uh, that the normal market would have. So with that doubled risk would also come double returns. If the market were to go up by 5%, then theoretically that stock should go up by 10% and vice versa for negative beta as well. If we have a negative beta of one, that means it's correctly inverse with the market. So if the market goes up by 1%, then that stock should go down by 1%. And then everything in between is all uh, a little bit different. So let's get to the charts real quick and um, see where we can look for beta. So I'm on my Thinkorswim platform as always, and you guys can uh, let me know if you, if you can see this clear or, or increase the image size to get HD video on YouTube here. And so what I've done is uh, I've gone to the charts tab and the profit charts tab of Thinkorswim. And so how I've created this chart, which is actually a chart of Goldman Sachs here in black. And then also the comparison is the S&P, uh, the dollar sign SPX, which is the S&P 500 here in blue. So you can actually see two different charts on one screen and then you have the percentage returns on the right hand side here. So how I actually got this chart is I went to the chart settings. I went to comparison chart. And then I added this uh, S&P here, right here. I can add another one if I want to. I can add a bunch of them if I want to uh, as well. So what I have here is this is Goldman Sachs. You can see that the S&P is in blue here. And so for Goldman Sachs to have a beta of exactly one, it would virtually need to follow the blue line here on this chart or the S&P. Now, if I quickly flip to the SPY, which is the ETF that follows the S&P, you can see that now my black line, which is the SPY, is much, much, much more correlated with the overall market. And that's because the SPY generally has a, a beta of right around one. So it's very correlated with the market and how the market moves. Again, you can see that if I flip back to anything, say Goldman Sachs again, Goldman Sachs does not have a beta of one. It's much more volatile than the market. Even when the market's dropping, it drops more. When the market rallies, it rallies or not. Uh, things like Google, again, not really that correlated with the market. Generally speaking, sometimes it can be correlated, but it has these, these one-off times where it just goes uh, in a different direction as the market. And that's how you start to build a portfolio that's kind of, you know, gets out all that systematic risk and all that, um, you know, all that unsystematic risk. I mean, the company specific risk. Things like Apple have very, very high beta. And you can see that the S&P is all the way down here. And so when the market rallies, Apple does even better and just has really, really high beta values and just continues to rally and makes this gap between the market. Another one that we can look at is SSO. This is the inverse of the S&P uh, shares. So you can see that this has a negative beta or should have a negative beta. Uh, and that's because as the market rallies, and you can see as the market rallies here, uh, then you have the uh, uh, SSO stock over here that's that's down. Um, I'm sorry, the, the SSO is the ultra shares. So these have a high beta correlation. I'm sorry. Uh, so these have a high beta correlation here. And as the market rallies, these do even better than the market. Again, that high beta means ultra risk uh, for the investor, but obviously can pay off really, really well. So how do you search for search for all this beta well you can go up here to your scan tab <clears throat> and I've already done a scan um, and put the scan together but I'm going to show you what I did and I went down here to the criteria of scanning all the stocks and just looking for the 10 sizzling stocks right now just to make it easy but you can see I can choose a criteria and there's all kinds of criteria in here put call ratios 
bid ask spreads. But what I've done is chosen beta and I've chosen a minimum beta of 0.1 and I've used this, these here to adjust my beta and a maximum beta of 5.6 just kind of roughly using these beta. And then I also want to look at only stocks that have a very large market cap so almost 10 billion market cap to a max so no max on the top side. And so what it came out with the, these search results down here of these 10 stocks. So if we look, you can, I can actually sort the beta here uh, very easily and I can sort the highest beta to the lowest. So you can see that AA or Alcoa has a very high beta of about 2.058. So if I right click on that and go to the profit chart, you can see that Alcoa has very high beta, meaning that it's a little bit riskier than the market, a little bit more volatile, and that makes complete sense because again, the blue line is our S&P 500 index, and then Alcoa here in black has been much, much more volatile. It's not following this quite as well. If I go back to the scan, I'll look at Intel, for example, it has a beta of 1.78, so it's gonna be a little bit more calm down than Alcoa. And you can see here on the chart that again, it's starting to follow the market a little bit closely. It doesn't have these wild swings that Alcoa does, uh, except for this little time period. Uh, but it's starting to follow generally where the market's going uh, a little bit better than Alcoa. Now again, I go back here and let's go look at the very, very end of the extreme. So a beta of 0.52. So this means it has low correlation with the market. It's not going to be as volatile. And this is FE. So again, if I go to my profit chart, you can see that this has very low correlation with the market. When the market is now up almost 50% on this two year uh, return chart, you can see that FE is only up about 10%. So again, very low correlation with the market. As the market rallied away, this just kind of sat and, and had pretty mediocre returns for the last two years. So again, with anything, if you find something that is high beta, you just wanna be a little bit more cautious in your trading. It has very, very volatile tendencies. And on the opposite end, if you find something that has very low beta, then you know that you have a little bit more steady stock. It's going to be a little bit uh, less volatile and moving. So those are usually good stocks. If you can find the low beta stocks with a really good dividend, those are usually some of the better trades out there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. And if you have any questions or comments, please email me and happy trading.